Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is the case of the idol quadruple murders that took place on the 13th of November 2022. The more I try to research on this case, it just leads me back to the weird things that were happening that night. Like the body cam of the minor alcohol shop in Banfield and the four figures running. Because we clearly know that in the first seven, eight weeks, the timeline that we was given was that the murders took place between 3 to 4 a.m. The coroner, when she spoke at the start, she said that the deaths were pronounced after 2 a.m. I know after 2 a.m. can be 2, 3, 4, 5, but usually the coroners try to make a timeline that is very close to when it could have happened. It has to do obviously with signs, how stiff the bodies are or how warm they are and such things. This is from Fox News. It states between the people with law enforcement and the people in the background of the body cam footage that is about half a dozen people the importance is they may have witnessed something unbeknownst to them. The body cam is stamped at 3.12 a.m. Police have pre previously maintained that they believe the murders took place between 3 to 4 that morning. And the body cam, when it was stamped 3.12 is when the four figures were running. If you look at the timings, it just can't be a coincidence that you have the minor stop that started at 2.58, two minutes to 3 a.m. Where did those four boys come from? Those three boys. Because they clearly told the police that they came from that direction. They pointed out, and when they were asked, do you know where the party was held, which apartment, they did not know. When the officer asked, do you know who was hosting the party, one of them clearly said, I don't know. The second one said, I think his name was Matt. Okay, that's Matthew. Why didn't the police ask them? More questions about that because those boys looked like they were really up to no good. The reason I say that is when the officer asked them to stop, they refused to stop. They continued walking and running or whatever and the police officer had to run after them. That is not normal. Anywhere in the world, when when the police ask you to stop, usually, you have to stop. When you are running, when people usually don't stop, that means they have something to hide. Were the boys carrying weapons, allegedly? Did they throw something in the field? Or hide something away? They all looked quite suspicious the way they were dressed. It was quite cold for them to be dressed that way. The direction they came from did not make sense. They refused to stop when the police asked them to stop. The officer had to run after them. All those are serious red flags. Then you have the four figures or five figures. Some people say six figures. But I was counting it today and it looked like it was five or six figures running. 
They weren't walking. They were running. They were jogging. And they weren't far away from the girl's house. They came, they looked like they came from the direction of King's Road. And they looked like they were running to the direction of Sigma Chi. All places near that area. I want to know why the Sigma Chi boys made all their posts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram private. They deleted or they, they put everything on private from 2019 to 2021. From 2019 October to 2021, 22 I mean sorry, when the murders took place. Let's not forget in the Fortune post, they did actually say that if they were going to commit these crimes, that they were going to make their own Instagrams and Snapchats and social media private for two weeks before the murders, that's called pre-planning, and two weeks after the murders. The two Davids were very fantasized in killings, trigger warning, unliving people. They had three targets that they mentioned, M for Maddie, Z for Zana, and E for Eaton. So what was going on? You just don't have a group of people fantasizing about unliving people that is up on social media and that we take it lightly and think that no, they're just, it's a game, they're just saying that. That needs to be thoroughly investigated because that is what you call motive. I don't see Brian Christopher Koberger having a motive here besides the Sigma Chi boys and the fraternity boys. The reason I say that allegedly is because not only did they make their post private, they explained how they were going to do it. And if this was just something that they said, I wouldn't have looked much into it. But isn't it kind of strange that they put all their social media on private? That is a red flag. And what is most strange for me that I can't get over is we actually had four, five or six figures running. Then I'll show you another red flag. We had the Sigma Chi boys to be the first witness. Didn't the two surviving roommates call the Sigma Chi boys? Wasn't Hunter Johnson the one who was allegedly taking the pulse of Zano Eaton? Why was in the 911 call first? We clearly heard Jasmine Canodal, Zana's sister, saying that she got the call in the morning. We heard Kaylee's friend, Eva, saying that she found that she found out about the incident at 10 a.m. Why was the police the last people to know about what happened? They found out two minutes to 12. Why were the Sigma Chi, go Sigma, Sigma Chi boys called first? I would love to know that. Then you have the fight that allegedly took place at one past three in the Sigma Chi. Who called the police? And what was the intentions of calling the police? Bethany Funk was... At the party, let's not forget, what did she witness? Is she scared of talking about what she witnessed? How much do these two surviving roommates know about this incident? Are they scared to talk? Do they know who the real suspects are? It's written here, between the people with law enforcement and people in the background of the body cam footage, 
That is about half a dozen people. That's true. You have three of the students stopped by the police, and then you have four or five people or six people running. That's almost a dozen of people. If they all were involved in the crime, it definitely makes sense. Because they did actually say that some will be out for on the guard, some will be w watching out, and some will be committing the c crimes. They had three targets, Maddie, Zan, and Eaton. Isn't that strange? The body cam is stamped at 3.12 a.m. Police have previously maintained that they believe the body cam is stamped at 3.12 a.m. Police have previously maintained that they believe the murders took place between 3 to 4 a.m. that morning. When did the timelines change? If you notice all the, all the fishy behavior was happening between 3 to 4 a.m. that morning. And the coroner mentioned that the deaths were pronounced after 2 a.m. Eaton, his mother, clearly said that 2 a.m. is the most difficult time for them. What happened between 2 to 3 a.m.? And who called Brian Koberger to the scene? For all you know, Brian Koberger could just have been a person peeping And he must have. He was called to the scene by whoever. That's a possibility. And when he saw what happened there, and he understood he's being framed, he could have speeded off. That is a possibility. Everyone says that Brian had a had a thing for Maddie. Or Kaylee, let's try and, and check that theory out. If he had, if he was a stalker and he was interested in one, one of the girls, why would he go and kill four people? Why would he even take the chance of going to a crowded house? He could have got Maddie while she was alone, or he could have got Kaylee while she was alone. Why would he need to go to the second floor, like Steve Congalvis said that, why would he have to need to go and unlive the other two people? And why would he decide to leave DM and BF alone, knowing that they are witness in the house too? I don't believe BK had any motive to do these horrific crimes. I believe this was, maybe, I hate to say this, maybe this was a bet or a game that went wrong with the fraternity boys. And possibly the girls were involved too, allegedly. Anything is possible here. I don't understand why these people haven't been investigated. Where are the four, five, six figures running? Police have previously said investigators found nothing of event, eventary value in the body cam videos, but it remains unclear whether they have identified or interviewed the people walking, more like the people running. Fox News Digital asked about the images of multiple locations beginning Saturday and has not yet received a response. Did you hear that? So Fox News was asking the police for their investigation of the four, five, six figures running, but the police did not respond. Online, slu online sleuths spotted a group of figures who can be seen walking near the intersection of King Road and Taylor Avenue, two houses down from the crime scene. Olivia Vitale, a true crime vlogger with more than one million followers on TikTok, went viral Saturday with the details. She said she believes someone walking with the group may have information that could have could help investigators. 
Obviously, they're not going to come forward if they were involved in the crimes, allegedly. I don't understand why a proper investigation hasn't been done. Why would these four figures come, or five figures, and say, yeah, it was us. We just went to grab a snack, or we were in a party, and we were just walking around. They're not going to do that. Moscow, Idaho, several people can be seen walking in the background of police, body cam, video, taken near the King Road home, where four University of Idaho students were killed in their sleep. Now we know nobody was killed in their sleep. Or we don't know how many were sleeping, actually, around the same time. Playing close officers made an unrelated stop of three University of Idaho students for suspected underage drinking at about 2.50 a.m. November 13 as they were walking across a field of Taylor Avenue in between the Sigma Chi frat house and the girls' rental home. Was all these figures running around from the Sigma Chi? The group was stopped about one-tenth of a mile from the off-campus rental where Madison Morgan, 21, her best friend Kaylee Congaves, Eaton Chapin and his girlfriend Zana Conodal were brutally stabbed to death between 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. If you pay attention to all these articles, it clearly says Sigma Chi. The people, the multiple people who called 911 on the 13th of November were allegedly Sigma Chi members. Both the Davids, David Lorch and David B, are both from Sigma Chi. Look at how much is related to Sigma Chi here. The couple, Zana and Eaton, were from Sigma Chi. Or they were at the party in Sigma Chi. This seems like a personal attack from the fraternities, I believe. This is something to do with the college. I don't understand what is happening that they're linking it to Brian Kohlberger. The Hyundai Elantra that the police were searching for on the 7th of December was supposed to be 2011 to 2013 model. It wasn't said it wasn't said that it was a 2015. They got tips in from the public. You can imagine if this was done, allegedly, by the college students. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be more sensible that they all would call from different phones if they decided to frame Brian Koberger for these murders? Very possible. 